Hello everyone, Mirin here. Here I present to you 5 of my past builds that are still viable in 3.16. If you are looking for a second build idea, this is the video for you. I'll roughly talk about their strengths and weaknesses as I show you how they clear an Awakener 8 tier 16 map. If you are interested in any one of them, you can find the updated POV down in the description for more details on how to build them. So let's get started. First one is the Reap Mine Trapper. The selling point of this build is you do not need to aim, because the trap that is spit out of the mine will jump towards the nearest enemy. And also, even though this is a trapper in its core, but since you are also using mines, so you can benefit from some of the mine passives as well. Now, compared to the previous version, its survivability has been nerfed, because the evasion mechanic received a rework. Before 3.16, this build uses Born in the Shadow Ascendancy to get 50% evasion. Pairing that with Phase Acrobatics, Arrow Dancing, and Wind Dancer, it rarely received a hit. And even if it got hit, there are still many other defense layers which allows it to tank Cyrus Die Beams and Porcupine Packs. Now, after tweaking with the build in the current version, I decided to completely remove all dodge and evasion part of the defense layer because they are no longer worth for this build. However, since this build still have many other defensive mechanics, so overall it only dropped around 10% in survivability, but in return it gained a bit more than 10% in damage, which is very respectable. I found a way to sustain Righteous Fire after my last video on the build, so compared to my old guide, it has almost doubled in damage. So far I'm able to do all content with it except for Feared and the Hidden Maven Invitations, but that's probably because I've never done them before so I didn't know what to expect. Now this build is probably the most well-rounded build out of the 5, which is why I decided to pick this one as my league starter. But right now Saboteur seems to be the most popular build because everyone is playing Seismic Trap with Exsanguinate. That means this build will be a bit more expensive than before. I'd say it is somewhere around 30 to 40 exalts, with a level 4 in power and a plus 1 plus 1 amulet being its most expensive pieces. But you can still do Awakener 8 Cyrus with maybe the half of the investment, so it's not too bad. This build is somewhat complicated to build, so it's not recommended for new players. But if you know what you're doing, this is probably one of the strongest builds out there at the moment. Next one is my auto-aiming machine gun with Focus Ballista. It is a very simple build with a very simple playstyle. What it does is it summons up to 5 Ballista Totems that uses Barrage. And when we use Barrage ourselves, all Barrage projectiles will funnel into the Hydrosphere that we create through the Aceneth Chance Helmet. And the Chain Mechanic will guide all projectiles towards the enemy so that none of the projectile will miss. This build is fairly cheap, sitting at a bit less than 10 exalt. It ended up dropping around 10% in damage on POB, but in practice, it is not really noticeable. I was still clearing Awakening 8 tier 16 maps, no problem. It is the second fastest mapper on the list, and even though she is naturally squishy as a Deadeye, she doesn't die all that often because most of the time, everything dies off screen. And even if you are forced to be close to the enemies, they will be knocked away from you very fast. However, in terms of bossing ability, it is not doing that great, at least with the amount of investment my character has. The Shape of Guardians may be low Awakener level Cyrus are the limit. It can definitely clear all contents, but the investment required is too big for it to be worth it, in my opinion, so I ended up not choosing it as my league starter. But this is probably the most newbie friendly build on the list as it doesn't even use any cluster jewels. And many of the people who tried it as their league starter has very positive feedback on this build. So if you are looking for a build to no brain currency farming for a long period of time, this one would be a good choice for you. Next one down the list, we have the Carson Crit Cyclone Reap. This build uses the Volcanus Battle Mage combo with Avatar Fire to get crazy high base, fire damage, and critical rate. 
and with the help of the Righteous Providence Ascendancy and over 400 on both Strength and Intelligence, it can easily reach above 90% critical rate. You can get 100% if you have equivalent gear to the POB, which is actually surprisingly cheap if you consider what it is able to do, sitting at a bit more than 10 exalts. Compared to the previous version, it has slightly more damage and slightly tankier. It doesn't feel right when something received a buff and not getting a nerf somewhere else for this game. But I couldn't really work out what was nerfed for this build, so that means the build will be able to clear Cyrus no problem, and probably Maven as well. Its clear speed is around average and it can handle expedition mobs, so I'd assume it can also handle the Scourge mechanic as well. In terms of overall power level, I'd say this is on the same level as the Mine Trapper. But because this is a melee build, so it naturally dies more often, and that's about the only reason why I didn't choose this build to leak start. If the trapper gear gets too expensive, this is one of my fallback options. Now it is a lot cheaper to reach high-end content compared to the trapper, but it does have a steep progression curve, where you will feel pretty bad before you have over 90% on both your accuracy and critical rate for your cyclone. But once you get there, you will be running over everything like a truck. And I'm fairly certain that it still has a lot of potential to improve with my current knowledge on the game. Next up, the Shotgun Man with Shattering Steel. Compared to my previous version, it seems to receive a minor buff on everything when I look at the stats on POB. And it feels fairly solid when I was testing it. I realized that it has a weirdly slow movement speed when I was revisiting the build for this video. But I guess Leap Slam, Quicksilver Flask, and Onslaught is there to solve the problem. This build at its current state is the cheapest out of the 5, sitting at less than 8 exalts to build. It is also a very simple build which makes it more newbie friendly compared to most of the other builds. However, without further investments, tier 16 maps are probably its limit. I didn't want to keep improving on this build mainly because it has a poor bossing speed and it requires some attention to positioning to play this build properly. Positioning and aiming just to do damage is something that I don't like in Path of Exile since you need to devote most of your attention on avoiding danger when it comes to high-end content. That's why the overall power level of this build is rated the lowest on this list. However, what it does have is a disgustingly high clear potential on high density and high HP enemy packs. If Cyrus is always surrounded with a big pack of minions, then this build might become the highest bossing DPS build on this list. Unfortunately, most of the endgame bosses usually don't summon any minions, so without any buffs or changes to the skill, it is not good enough to do endgame content. With that said, Lancing Steel seems to be a viable alternative for this build, since it has the highest bossing DPS out of all the steel skills. But right now, many other build ideas look more interesting to me with the new skill tree rework. So for now, I'm gonna focus on those instead. Finally, the last build on the list, we have the Herald of Thunder Autobomber. This build is a classic, but I did add some of my own ideas into the build, giving it 7 power charges and 7 frenzy charges for more speed and damage, and also Void Sphere to deal with high HP monster packs. This build does have the highest mapping speed out of the 5, and on top of that, it also have a decent bossing DPS. And because it clears the map so fast, even with the flask nerfs, you can still piano all the flasks as if the nerf never existed. Now the downside of this build is that it is kinda squishy and it is kinda expensive just to get it functional. It's expensive because it relies on cluster jewels and some other jewels for most of its damage, since the skill has limited ways for damage boost. And the majority of these jewels are kinda expensive themselves, since you do need to get the high tier versions of these jewels for this build to perform. This build you see on the screen costs at least 15 exalts, probably higher, but at its current state, it can do up to Awakener for Cyrus, which is pretty respectable. If the price of these core jewels turns out to be not as high, I might give it a second look, because compared to before, it seems to receive some small buffs on survivability. 
so I'm kinda curious to find out if it has the potential to become a top tier build. And that is 5 builds for you to choose or get ideas from if you are still looking for a decent league starter or a second character. In terms of my opinion on the overall power level, Mind Trapper is first, followed by Cyclone Reap, Ballista Barrage, Auto Bomber, then Shattering Steel. And in terms of newbie friendly league starter, it would be Ballista Barrage, and then Shattering Steel, Mind Trapper, Cyclone Reap, and then Auto Bomber. I will be looking into creating a few new builds in this league, but it might take me a while because real life has creeped up on me again. Anyways, and that's it for today. Subscribe for extra mirror drop chance. Hopefully, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.